Now let's bring you up to date with the celebration of Ibrahim Babangida at 80. If, as former military president, General Ibrahim Badamasi Babangida rolls out the drums for celebration of the, his 80th birthday. Prominent Nigerians have continued to pour encomium on him. We examine his legacies as a military ruler and elder statesman. <laughs> Ibrahim Batamusi Babangida was born in Mina, capital of Niger State, exactly 80 years ago in 1941. His father was Muhammad Babangida and mother Aisha. Young Ibrahim received early Islamic education before proceeding to primary school in 1950 and completed in 1956. He attended Government College Bida for his secondary education between 1957 and 1962. He moved on to join the Nigerian Army on the 10th of December 1962 and attended the Nigerian Military Training College, Kaduna. By September 26, 1963, Ibrahim Babangida was commissioned as second lieutenant in the Army. With the outbreak of the Civil War in 1967, Lieutenant Babangida was drafted to the war front within Biafra territory to 1970. At the end of the war, he was promoted and posted to the Nigeria Defense Academy as an instructor. His rise to power began with his active participation in the 1975 coup led by General Mutala Mohammed that removed General Yakubu Gowon. Colonel Babangida in 1976 was prominent in crushing the Gideon Dimka coup. Though the coup failed eventually, the head of state, General Mutala Mohammed, was assassinated. By 1983, General Babangida orchestrated the coup that ended the civilian government of President Shehu Shagari with General Muhammad Buhari as head of state. He became the chief of army staff in the new administration. By August 27, 1985, another coup was carried out, ousting General Buhari and bringing in General Babangida as head of state. Apart from surviving several coup d'etat, General Babangida created two states on 23rd September 1987 and another nine states on 27th August 1991. His government on 12th of December 1991 relocated the federal capital from Lagos to Abuja. But one of the sore points of his government was the annulment of the 1993 presidential election won by his bosom friend Chief M.K. Wabiola. By August of the year 1993, General Babangida bowed to pressure from activists demanding the restoration of Abiola's mandate and stepped aside. The failure to resolve the killing of Delegiwa, another friend of General Babangida since 1986, has remained a huge question mark on the human rights record of the former military president. As he celebrates his 80th birthday, General Babangida will be remembered as the man who kept Africa as the centerpiece of Nigeria's foreign relations. Now let's broaden this out by speaking with the Secretary General of the Organization of African Trade Union, Unity, Owe Lakemfaj, who is joining us to share his thoughts on General Bangida's achievement as it turns 80. Thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Lakemfa. Uh, well, a lot of accolades, uh, wish, best wishes, and different analyses about the life, and the, the life of the um, old general. Some are saying that it's worth celebrating. Others are criticizing him based on the actions that he took while he was the head of state. On uh, uh, which angle or where exactly do you stand on all of this? Thank you very much. Uh, in my culture, whenever anybody is celebrating, you have to celebrate with him. Oh, wow. So I congratulate General Babangida for turning 80. And I also pray that uh, I was also turn 80 <laughs> eventually. But, um, and he has a right to celebrate himself, and his family has a right to celebrate him. But uh, for Nigeria, it's, it will be a mourning period because President Bar General Babangida, who also called himself a president, destroyed the Nigeria economy, destroyed, especially through the structural adjustment program, the second tier, you know, foreign exchange program, the privatization of the economy. They just simply sold public assets to themselves 
and um, and the country is the worst for it. So he, he, he was one of those who destroyed the country and who has seen the country at this level we are today. This level of insecurity, of, us, of, of uncertainty. And I've, I've watched a number of his, um, interviews that people were in, you know, in comments on him. And I, I, just, I just reflected that this is a man who once led the country, he's 80. And all around him in Niger State there, children can't go to school. Children of Islamia school, you know, 12, 13 year old kids are being, you know, with kidnappers for, for a month to. There are just insecurity everywhere. And so, and then in amidst all this of hunger, anger, he then throws, you know, a lavish, uh, this is for himself, program, events, live programs. There's a lot of insensitivity about it all and a lack of remorse for the destruction of this country. Because we had, at independence, you know, Nigeria had a lot of promise. Well, that is where, that is where you stand, Mr. 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 Lakemfa. Uh, well, you, you are very much entitled to your opinion and based on your um, review of whatever it is that the old general had done. But some will tell you that the SAP did a lot to help Nigeria. It also brought the policy of uh, one woman, four children, which would have really helped us to, you know, tame the massive population we have in Nigeria, even though it's not been used to, uh, you know, the be better, better efficiency. Also, the third, the third million bridge is also there, which he, he, he inaugurated, you know, at a point in time. And creation of different states, helping to, you know, break Nigeria into different parts, identifi identifiable parts. Would you not see all of these things as, you know, positive strides he made while he was a general? He was a general, well, uh, the head of the state, rather. Well, the, the structural adjustment program destroyed the Nigerian economy because it was a program so-called to liberalize the Nigerian economy and allowed you know, foreign interests, transnational corporations to run the country and destroy the local economy. For example, if you take the textile industry, for instance, the textile industry by under Babangida, but I've had over, by the time he came in, had over 500,000 workers. By the time he left, they were almost gone. Today, they had about 24,000 workers there. So the structural adjustment program destroyed the Nigerian economy. And, you know, in a way, also destroyed us. When Babangida was president, I remember when the IMF came, the Naira was nine, was nine Naira to a dollar. And he made the IMF leadership. On, one day, on television and increased the, 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 the valuation of the Naira by 100%. And so Naira became 18 Naira, you know, to a dollar. That is not, that's not economics, that's good reason. That is, an, you know, a, a destruction of the economy. I know somebody who is of a lady who is not a who built an hotel in, in, uh, in Abuja, and he had, you know, he had, he had gone to take loans in dollar, and now he, he thought he could pay in seven years. With the devaluation of the Naira, he found that even if he spent under 100 years on that, he, he will not be able to pay back. So it's it's a it's, it's a very it's a very sad thing. Well, that we yeah the structure adjustment program it wasn't just right. Nigeria that was destroyed. Right. If if over, you, you know, I, I need I need to I need to jump in here said, because of our time. If you ask the old general, he will tell you that some of the actions that he took then were based on the interests of Nigerians. But all the same, we'll keep talking about these. We'll keep analyzing these on our channel. And thank you so much. Secretary General of the Organization of African Trade Union, Unity, Owe Lakemfa, thank you so much for your insight. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much.